Welcome to another episode of Cyber Bites, the podcast coming to you live from Vegas at Black Cat 2025. I'm sitting down with Oz Wasserman, one of the co-founders of Opsin, as he discusses how they're securing generative AI for enterprises. All right, and we're on introducing Oz Wasserman, one of the co-founders over at Opsin. How you doing, mate? Yeah, good. How good are you? Good to meet you, man. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Yeah, so you're not as jet-lagged as me. Uh, no, not quite. Just a, an hour flight for us. But You're living in San Francisco? Yes. yes nice. San Francisco Bay Area, so yeah, a quick how's flight. The, how's the conference been so far? Terrific. We're meeting a lot of partners, a lot of great people. I mean, the atmosphere and the, the energy is super high, so mm. we're extremely excited and you know, we're seeing great value. It's yeah. really busy as well. Yes. Like the energy and the amount of sheer people that are here in comparison to last year, I'd be... It's a lot higher. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, look, Oz, with all of my guests on the show, I'd like to just take it right back to where it all began, how you got into the industry. Yeah, so, quick about me, right? Like, um, I started my cybersecurity career in Israel. I was born and raised there. I uh, spent many years in cyber in the military and um, came to the U.S., worked in a bunch of product and engineering um, powerhouses such as FireEye and Mandiant. Mm-hmm. Uh, been early on at Abnormal Security, where I met my co-founder James. Been in a couple of other product uh, leadership roles and early stage startups. And we started Opsin roughly about a year and a little bit ago. Um, it's been such a fun ride, uh, great momentum, obviously, with AI being adopted across the board, mm. uh, getting great Great traction, amazing partners and customers and prospects, and just having a great time. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned you met James while she was over at Abnormal. What was your relationship there? Yeah, so um, we worked together at the early team of Abnormal. So mm-hmm. I was on the product management team doing a lot of the email security and data security related things. James was more on the AI and machine learning side. Um, so our, his specialty in AI and machine learning uh, gained from Abnormal and, and other places. My specialty in security were a great mix when we started thinking about how to go about Opsin. So mm-hmm. he brought a lot of his deep machine learning and AI, not only from companies, but also from MIT. And then I, I brought my knowledge in security and we were like, okay, let's combine the two, security for AI or AI for security. And here we are like a year and a little bit after and uh, kind of nailing down our use cases and and again, just combining the knowledge. At what point did you sort of think, right, let's, let's found a company? And we started thinking about it in November of 2023. We just literally had a chat about it before Black Hat. Um, it was a long process of talking to a lot of industry leaders and, and security and, AI, and, and IT practitioners. Um, we started knowing we have something about three to four months after we started this whole process. Uh, and then Opsin was born roughly around May of 2024, uh, and, but we 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 gained a long way ever since, mm-hmm. and you know refining our approach and and it's just about being very close to the market at this yeah, point. Yeah. You mentioned you was doing a lot of like interviews with security leaders and things like that. What was you finding the problem was? What what did you sort of? Yeah, so we always, like I said, we started from, hey, let's do security for AI, but it was very broad. Mm. You have to also narrow down the use case and your your uh, focus. So what we did is we, we, we talked to a lot of these practitioners. We talked to how are they adopting AI in general? What are the use cases that they're using? Not just from security, just from productivity reasons. And I think what we're, we're starting to see is that uh, people were, back when we talked to them in 2024, they were just thinking about it. Now in 2025, people are starting to adopt it more mm. broadly, even in the traditional industries. What we're finding out is that everybody, you know, the buzz is around agents and like autonomous AI, but a lot of people, the majority of the enterprises are in square one mm. and wanting help with adopting AI securely. And that's where we're focused today as a company. Yeah. Um, so we learned a lot of it doing hundreds, if not almost thousands of conversations with the market, making some very close to it. That also shaped our vision and how we approach this problem altogether. Yeah. What are some of the actual risks associated with the increased adoption of AI across businesses? Yeah. So when we did this refinement and we talked to a lot of leaders, what we found is that, you know, they're either just starting their journey. So they're testing the tools from return on investment perspective, from any type of productivity use cases. 
But also, you know, they want to get quick wins with their management teams. So any type of use case around Microsoft Copilot, for example, which is a closed ecosystem to build on top of AI, whether you use Copilot Studio to build agents or whether you use Copilot Chat to retrieve data to gain productivity. Same with Google Gemini and Agent Space and Glean. These use cases are easier to achieve and create this momentum of wins for the enterprises. But what we found out is they're really scared from the unknown unknowns in these tools, uh, especially around because these tools are so easy to set up and so easy to connect to your data. Um, so we're finding it's, it's quite funny because we're finding that, you know, these are so powerful connected to your enterprise data. You know, questions like, hey, can you summarize any payroll documents you can find? Or can you summarize any like of my CEO tax returns? And, you know, because that data for years and years sitting, you know, over permissions and in places that we didn't really govern as well, but then here comes AI and retrieves you an answer of here's your CEO's tax returns. Here's the payroll from your friend that sits in the, in the other engineering team. So these are the type of challenges that we're seeing uh, actually from the very beginning all the way to today is how we roll it securely without compromising our, our sensitive data into it. Yeah, yeah. Tell us more about Opsin then. So Opsin comes into this problem space um, and trying to solve what we call this AI oversharing, which mm -hmm. what, the thing that I described is exactly what oversharing is, is entailing. And what we're trying to solve is in, in, in two, different, two different main uh, offerings. One is what we call the risk assessment and mm -hmm. what we call AI readiness assessment. So we give you a very comprehensive, but yet very succinct and very actionable report into what data is exposed to your AI model, uh, what sensitive data actually, and then how do you fix it and how do you actually get to the baseline to be able to confidently roll it out to the entire organization. Uh, we actually have a promise uh, that we came up at Black Hat that we are just a one-click integration mm -hmm. and within 24 hours we scan uh, you know, our proactive risk assessment will give you the results that you want on the sensitive information you care about, as opposed to other people that can take months and months to scan your entire mm. repository and give you like, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of, of findings that they find. Us is a lot more targeted in what you care about. So that's, you know, kind of the first step with Opsin. Second step is like once you are more confidently rolling it out to the entire organization, thousands of people are actually going to uh, use these tools, the risk changes, the risk of you misusing the tools, the risk of you asking questions, you know, as an insider, for example, or give me, you know, putting PII or regulated data into these tools, stuff that actually violates the AI policy for organizations. So, mm. so everything about continuously monitoring these, also oversharing, but not only that, because the risk changes. So just to summarize the initial risk assessment, the ability to understand and get visibility and how do you actually reduce the risk and be able to roll it out, then continuously monitoring everything related to AI interactions and making sure that your organization is safe. Mm -hmm. Considering you're already such a young firm, I'm right in saying that you've already got enterprise customers as well, right? Yeah, we were blessed with, you know, kind of this tailwind of adoption of AI. So yeah. a lot of a lot of customers, even traditional industries, are just pushing really strong for AI. So we do have enterprise customers like Cold Again um, and and Barry Wellmiller, uh, Cascade Environmental, Wellstar Health Systems. So we're working with dozens of enterprise companies that are pretty large mm. in, in order to secure the AI deployment. Uh, we also have paid customers and, and we're just seeing great momentum mm. given the, the market is adopting AI very, very fast. Well, I saw on James's, uh, your co-founder's LinkedIn and he was very chuffed about it, understandably, but he had two deals close on the same day, I heard. Yes, we're, we're seeing great momentum. Again, I think we're pushing very strong forward. We're seeing paid customers. Um, thanks to our own execution and our own uh, team effort, uh, but I also address it to, to the point where, you know, we're, we're just seeing a very strong timing in mm. the market that people are just adopting and we're at the right place at the right time. Uh, mm. and, and with great technology and great execution abilities, we'll, we want to capitalize on that. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about sort of the growth and the 
trajectory of where the space is going. So what, what do you think, sort of even in the next like three to five years, we've seen in the last sort of 18 months how the rollout of ChatGPT and everything's just gone through the roof, but three to five years, where, where are we gonna be like? Yeah, well, I, I'm literally seeing week over week so many changes, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to follow. But I do think if I just put aside the technological advantages and, and focus on what I'm seeing from prospect and customers in terms of use cases that are adopted in the enterprise, uh, we're at the preliminary stages of just gaining productivity. But people are starting, and I just had these conversations exactly with, with uh, CISOs and CIOs of, of large fintech and healthcare companies. Um, and they're starting to think about the AI strategy for marketing, the AI strategy for sales, and the AI strategy for customer support. And a lot of it falls down into agents mm -hmm. and automating a lot of these manual processes. So I think where we're going in the next three to five years is to really think from an AI first perspective, mm -hmm. what can I have as a business value for my firm to put in, in charge of in the relief of AI uh, one example I heard from from those uh, CIOs is everything around marketing and content strategy. It needs to re, re, rethought completely. And then everything around automation. Mm -hmm. How can I utilize agents? How to, can, I, can I utilize AI automation to do a lot of the repetitive tasks I had to do? So to your question, in three to five years, I do see the combination of, you know, gaining those productivity use cases being very, very deepened into the enterprise, but once this is showing the return on investment, people will be much, mm. much more compelled to go into those truly deep use cases to gain massive productivity in every single function. Mm. Such an exciting time. Speaking of exciting times, you're obviously going through a growth stage yourself uh, internally at Opsin. Why would some potential folks that may be listening to this be interested in joining such a, a cool young company like yourself? Yeah, and we're, by the way, hiring across the board, right, for growing our engineering teams quite substantially and also the go-to-market. I think I, I, was, I was talking about it a lot with actually my co-founders and other employees. This is an amazing team in a space that is just, you know, gaining more momentum every single day with great technology and a very focused use case around AI oversharing that matters to customers. So if you're thinking about coming and building on top of a use case that has a true need and a true pain in the world of AI. And, and by the way, also build in the era of, of AI with security to AI being in the boom of all these technological um, evolution. I think this is the great space for, for folks. And even in my personal career, this is my fifth zero to one startup. I think this timing wise of where we are with adoption versus our, our technology and how can we execute, this is one of those sweet spots mm. that are not gonna happen in, in my career quite often. Uh, so I'm extremely excited about the opportunity and I think anybody that joins will feel the same. Yeah, man. Well, Oz, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure and I wish you all the best of success with Bobson. Thank you so much. Thank you.